Hi, my name is Warren Geisler. I'm a support technician with CAD1, an Autodesk Authorized Training Center in Thornton, Colorado. Today I'd like to spend a few minutes with you showing you some of the cool things you can do with all the freely distributed GIS data that's out on the internet right now. For this, we're going to be taking a look at AutoCAD Map 3D 2010 and the FDO technology that's built into the program. Inside your AutoCAD Map task pane, you'll see the Display Manager. This tool allows you access into all of the downloadable data that you can find right now. It's very easy to get a hold of this data. All you need to do is to click the Data button that's inside the Display Manager. By doing that, you'll be allowed to connect to the data. By selecting Connect to the Data, you'll be given a list of all of the providers that come with AutoCAD Map. Now, not all of these providers that you see in front of you right now are available with MAP right out of the box. In order to get to several other different providers, you'll have to visit the OSGEO website, download the files for those providers, and install them in MAP. Just head on over to the OSGEO website at www.osgeo.org. At the bottom right of the website, you'll see a link for FDO. This portion of the website contains links for all of the additional FDO providers that are available for you to use in AutoCAD Map, AutoCAD Topo Base, or MapGuide. Connecting to the data is a relatively straightforward process. You pick the provider that you want to connect to. You're going to give the connection a particular name, something that will be easy for you to remember and then you can pick an individual file or a group of files. In this instance, I'm just going to pick one file to connect to, and this is going to be a shape file. Once I click the Connect button, you'll see in here that a coordinate system has already been assigned to that particular file. I can change the coordinate system if I want to. If I've got my own coordinate system assigned to the drawing, it will convert that information to my coordinate system, and if not, my drawing will take on the coordinate system of the file that's coming in. Now I'll go ahead and close that Data Connect pane and you'll see that I've connected to all of this information. I can rename this layer if I want to, but what's most important is that when I click on this Table button here, I've got access to all of the attribute information that comes with that GIS data. I can also click on a particular piece of that information in my drawing, Go into the AutoCAD Properties window, and as you see here, I've still got access to all that information that's right in the Properties window. This feature is brand new to AutoCAD Map 2010, and it's very easy to use. Now, what else can you do with some of this data? One of the first things that you can do is color code the information based on a particular feature of that data or an attribute of that data just by picking on the layer that you're going to want to work with. You can click the Style button and that brings up the Style Editor. The Style Editor allows you to edit the style, which in this instance would be the color of the information or the line type or even the line weight of the information and I can put on labels. Right now I'll click the little Style button and as you see here I can change the color. I've got access to just about any other color and by doing that you'll see that you can color code the layers similar to the way that you do it inside of AutoCAD Map. You'll also see that I can build a theme of the information. Now this allows me to color code all of the data that I've downloaded based on one particular attribute of that information. In this instance I'm going to pick the type of the road that I've downloaded. It'll break down all of the information based on the type and I'll be able to build a range and the range can include a thickness of the line type or different color codes or even patterns. In this instance I'll just pick the colors, come back into my drawing, and as you see here I've even got a table built up that shows all of the information broken down by color and it's all broken down into my theme rules. Now along with this I can add a scale range into my data. The scale range is similar to what you might see in Map Guide or in Google Earth, and that means as you're zooming in closer to your information, you can see more data or less data as you're zooming out. The next drawing that I'm pulling up is a map of Colorado. All of the information that you see in front of you was freely distributed data that I've pulled off of different websites, such as the Colorado Department of Transportation and the City of Denver GIS website. 
What I'd like to do with this information is show you some of the dynamic maps that you can create using all of the data that you can download and along with that how you can use some of the scale ranges to show important information at different zoom factors. As I'm zoomed all the way out, all, only the information that is visible would be the counties and some of the highways. But as you see here, as I zoom in, I can see the city information and then as I zoom in a little bit farther, you'll see that I've got parcel information that's available to me. As I keep zooming in, that parcel information will change and show me additional label information about the parcel owners. Not only can you use scale ranges to accent different pieces of information at different zoom factors, but as you see up here, you can use the mapping function to highlight different types of data with different maps, such as floodplain information as you see here, or even zoning information. If you found some of this information useful today, please visit our website at www.atyourdesktraining.com. Thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me.